from the most beautiful islands in the world, populated by the most beautiful people in the world. 10,000 performers, 60,000 spectators. We are thrilled to bring you the premier cultural event in the Bahamas. This is Junkanoo. And with me is Debbie Barton, co-owner of Barton and the Queen of Communications and GEMS 105.9. And Debbie, are we going to have some fun tonight? I think it's going to be an experience for our friends around the world. And I'm here with my good friend, big brother, Jack Alester. And you know Power Rangers. Well, if you know Power Rangers, you know Jack. Jack is the creator of Power Rangers, but he's also written over a thousand episodes of Inspector Gadget, Green Man, Care Bear. And I'm so happy that you're a friend of the Bahamas. But we also have a wonderful Junkanoo technician. His name is Anthony Molly, but he also publishes a Junkanoo annual publication that is fantastic. He's an artist, he's a photographer, and I'm excited about the color that you will bring because he also is a designer. Welcome, Anthony. Thank you very much, and wherever you are, wherever you are, sit back, relax, kick off your shoes, get your popcorn, get your soft drink, because you are about to witness the most spectacular performance. And speaking of color and performance, we're fortunate that we've got Kim Olesker and John Bostwick down on the ground in the heart and soul of Junkie. So right now, let's go down to John and Kim, down on Bay Street in the heart of Junkie. Jeff and Debbie, we are so excited to be part of Junkanoo here on Bay Street. We are excited to experience that pride and enthusiasm of the island. Right, John? You better believe it, Kim. We're gonna get the opportunity to be right up close to the action, get up close and personal with the performers. I can't wait. Let's go. Back to you, Debbie and Jack. Okay, that's wonderful. We're gonna come back to you later on today. Who's our first group tonight, Anthony? Our first group is One Family, and their theme is Gambling, a very topical issue in the Bahamas. I think it'll be interesting for our viewers to get a sense of how the judging process is, what we mean when we say that it's a contest, not just a festival, and how this all takes place and what the process is. Well, Jack, what is happening here is that these groups are competing for prizes. The prizes, prizes of money, cash money, trophies, and bragging rights. How much money are we talking about? We're talking as much as $30,000. $30,000. These groups are judged, first of all, by their banners, uh, the overall impression. You have what we call the best costume category. You have the best dancer category. We have the choreographed dance. And of course, we have the music, which carry a whole lot of points. You put them all together, the judges come up with a score, which is a very difficult thing to do, but someone will win and someone will lose. You know, it was so exciting when Debbie and I were in the shacks and we were seeing the preparations that were being made. These costumes that you're looking at, they may look like they're one big splash of color or multicolors, but the reality is that they're comprised of hundreds of thousands of small strips of paper that are applied and pasted to these amazing floats and costumes. And the amount of work that goes into it is absolutely astounding. That was one of the things I was so impressed about when I was going into the Junkanoo Shacks with Debbie. I think it'd be interesting for our viewers to get a little sense of what it was like when Debbie and I went in there. Let's take a look at those Junkanoo Shacks right now. People come from all over the world to see Junkanoo, but nobody gets to see what we're seeing. Why is it that nobody gets to see 
these amazing creations in these kind of stages? I'll give you two reasons. The first one is kind of cheeky. We don't want them to see it because we want them to show up on Bay Street. Uh, okay, that's the cheeky one. But seriously, the themes and the final product is a trade secret. They want to come out and have the shock effect. It's amazing to see the parade itself and to see all these incredible costumes and these incredible creations, but to see the process that goes through here, the labor that's involved and the love that's involved in putting this together. You better love it if you're doing that. You know, it's all the more amazing. I am delighted and surprised to see how much work you've done already. Yeah, over here there's a jack of hearts. What you got is two jacks. <laughs> Let me ask you one question, and I want you to give me an honest answer. In all the years that you have all been building these magnificent floats and these wonderful statues, has there ever been a time that you guys built one and it was too big to get out of the door? Uh, no. <laughs> no. We have some very special people in the crowd. John, who do we have here? Kim, we're so happy tonight to have here somebody who I call Mr. Bahamas. Um, and his wife, the very, very, very well respected and loved in the Bahamas, Congresswoman Maxine Waters and Ambassador Sidney Williams, um, former ambassador to the Bahamas, and somebody who I think keeps coming back for John Canoe with his lovely wife. And we're so happy to have Mrs. Waters here with us tonight. Um, it's always an honor to have you here in the Bahamas. Thank you. Delighted to be here. I look forward to this every year. You know, I've been working very hard all year, but I get to come here, relax, have fun. And the highlight of this trip is Junkanoo. Oh, Junkanoo. Yes. Junkanoo. So, Maxine, for the yes. record, who are you rooting for? Well, actually, you know, my husband was a diplomat here. So he <laughs> keeps reminding me of that. And so I'm rooting for... Saxons, Valley Boys, uh, One Family, Root. I'm rooting for everybody. And now, let's find out a little bit about the history of Junkanoo. More than 700 islands of what we today know as the Bahamas were inhabited over 7,000 years ago. Some 40,000 Arawak Indians lived here peacefully. In 1492, Christopher Columbus made the first landfall in what would come to be called the New World. While the Spanish never colonized the Bahamas, they did brutally ship every last Arawak Indian back to Europe in chains as slaves, leaving the islands deserted. As the Spanish plundered the new world of its gold, others took note, and soon the era of the pirates had begun. Villainous rogues like Blackbeard and the infamous female pirate Anne Bonny raided, looted, and sank galleon after galleon. It was during this period that labor was needed to build the new world and harvest its crops. And so, in the 1600s, slave ships that once brought their cargo of human suffering from the new world to Europe, now transported them from Europe to the new world. Around this time, a West African prince named John Canoe was brought to the new world. Brash and unbowed, he demanded three days off during Christmas so he and his fellow slaves could celebrate the holidays. Incredibly, his British masters agreed and the tradition of the Junkanoo celebration was born. The music and energy is amazing. 
Jack, amazing is the word. When the top groups start making their way down here on Bay Street, the whole environment elect is electrified <laughs> like you've never heard it. So now the Saxons are on their way down here. Oh, Kim's got uh, something with John down uh, down on the street in the middle of the festival right now. Let's go to them and see what's happening down there. We are here waiting for the Saxons. They're the they're one of the top A groups, if not the top A group. Uh -huh. I've been warned, <laughs> so I, I'm going to stay neutral. Yes, the Saxons have decided to do this year as a tribute to uh, now the late Michael Jackson. So it, it is a very impressive piece of work. Well, we know we were all moved in the Bahamas and around the world when the legendary Michael Jackson met what most of us consider an untimely death. But it is like one of our own died. And so I am not surprised at all to see that one of the A groups have chosen, has chosen Michael Jackson as a team. Debbie, Jack, the Saxons is a contemporary group. They are aware of what's going on around the world as far as Europe, as far as the Fies, China, you name it. And tonight, this morning, they are putting on their best rendition of Netherlands, a tribute to the king. It's a magnificent tribute to one of the greatest stars in not only in the history of music, but maybe in the history of all entertainment. And to see this now, it's, it's very, very touching. I feel like getting out there myself. Hey, why don't you, Kim? I gotta say, guys, this ain't nothing like it. No way. Okay, we're gonna take a break, and we'll be right back. I think this is very beautiful and unique. Um, one of the things I'm seeing here on these costumes that I hadn't seen before is the inclusion of local straw work. From and the significance of the straw market. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Bahamian straw work, uh, as, we, as you know, the world famous straw market is one of the things that we advertise heavily to our tourists. And to see all elements of Bahamian culture displayed here at John Canoe is very impressive. Very impressive. Debbie, and we know that this choreography doesn't just happen overnight. They practice in neighborhoods, they're on basketball courts. Let's take a look. As you can see, at these practice sessions, there are plenty of vendors making a buck. But it is all about practice. These practice sessions are an event, and hundreds attend. This is an ordinary night in Nassau, and these musicians out here are practicing, but they aren't being paid. They're doing it just for the love of jumping. 
What you're seeing is a typical practice session. But understand that these sessions begin in September and there are literally dozens of them leading up to the big night. And while this may be a typical practice session, there's nothing typical about this couple. Debbie, we look pretty good there, but back to the parade. And next up is Roots. This is a top tier A group, and they rock. Roots is doing a magnificent tribute to the Miss Universe pageant that the Bahamas recently hosted. And I don't know which is more beautiful, these floats or the girls. have how many members do you think? They will have no less than 600 people performing, but typically at the Boxing Day Parade, it's narrow for Roots 800 or more. I think we better go down and see what Kim and John are doing down on the road. Debbie, they're with the man whose job it is to keep order during Junkanoo, the Honorable Tommy Turnquist. You know, Minister, this has been an absolutely first class, A plus parade, safety, not even a concern. Well, like, like I said, a lot of a lot of work has been put into this. Uh, obviously, the John Canoe groups have uh, put a lot of work. The organizing committee, I want to commend them as well because in, in recent years past, you've had lots of gaps. They've tried to deal with that to make sure uh, the crowd is well behaved. And so we're, we're pleased that everyone can enjoy it and a wonderful experience. Well, we are. This is my first time, and I'm enjoying it tremendously. Well, I'm glad. Tremendously. I'm, I'm glad that you asked. You know, yeah. Minister, one of the things we must say on air is that it was, you were very instrumental in this broadcast, and it was one of you, well, one of the people instrumental in a blessing and a okay and a go-ahead to get John Crew out to the world. And again, that is so highly commendable. So that's, that's important to do. I had an opportunity uh, to work with the group earlier and um, bought into what they are doing, and I think it's a great thing. Most definite. Most One of the definitely. most far-reaching things. And this minister was once a minister of tourism and has some very far-reaching qualities as far as multimedia. And again, he's staying true to himself. Right. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Back to you. Drums are a huge part of Junkanoo, and these drums are made up of goat skins stretched over 55 gallon commercial steel drums. The drums are then laid on their sides around a bonfire, so the heat stretches the goat skins tight. It's a sight that's at once beautiful and strange. Yes, this, this is the other half of Junkanoo's greatest rivalry, you know. You got boxing, you got Ali versus Foreman, and, and Saxons, Valley Boys is our great rivalry in the Bahamas, the greatest rivalry in the Bahamas. Well, it all comes down to this. We've seen the Saxons, we've seen Roots, we've seen the A groups. Here come the Valley Boys. Debbie, Anthony, what do you think? Well, the Valley Boys are the defending champions. They are a senior group, and they are considered a measuring stick by which all other groups are measured. Wow, unbelievable. 
You've seen the, the Saxons, one family, and you, you hear from the crowds. This is what John Fruit was all about. Saxons Valley. Just keep your eyes open. Don't go to sleep. You probably may miss up. Who's that with Kim down there? Hey, how are you? We fine. How are you doing? Good. I'm good. We broadcasting live. So are we. So are we. You guys are worth waiting for. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hour after hour, the energy pageantry continues. Look at this. Do you see this? Anthony, the Valley Boys look like an army. How many performers do you think they have down? It's been a long, long night, but these Valley Boys have re-energized the crowd and we can feel the electricity. <laughs> 